for three days a lot of technology. So today we are hard here with us. Well chit chat. We are going to touch one very hard part, which is the NFTs. Um, so just a little bit about myself first, because I know um, not everybody here has probably met me already. Um, my name is Joe Reese. I'm a IT engineer. Okay, so I work um, full time in the DevOps realm, um, where you need to know systems engineering. You also need to be a coder, scripter, and so on. Um, on the side, I own a blog at TechNews.com, and you know, for all of you out there to have a platform, a business or something you want to promote, what I'm doing for everybody um, here throughout the entire conference is if you want to be able to send it to me, um, if you have a video or an article you want to post, I'll put it on my website for free, and that way you can say, oh, you know, you were featured over here. It's a win-win situation. We both, you know, win in that scenario, right? You get trapped and so on. Um, so sorry about that. All right, <laughs> let's get, let's, uh, Get started to uh, our NFT talk, shall we? So um, let's start with, you know, what is a crypto asset, right? And uh, NFT from a general perspective. You want to uh, leave it there? Yes. Okay. Actually, uh, I would like to start with the mainstream media because as we said that today we are currently seeing uh, new actors. Uh, we have been seeing how ICOs have been running, have been trading. A lot of companies have been generating revenue and uh, starting their companies and uh, shut down on the next day. Many uh, world have been witnessing new investors. But today, based on the different conversation we had, we are thinking about the future. Future where it's not about adaptive insurance, adaptive insurance. It's not about the uh, knowledge we know about AI. But it's more about use that experience, and I remember you mentioned about it. Well, this is one of the best important factors when you talk about the people. And that's what I just want to ask to touch you uh, about how and what is really happening for you that NFT is becoming a media state, becoming mainstream and everywhere. So are we witnessing any web? Are we witnessing a transformation on those entities? Well, it's definitely a trend out there. Um, but first, for people that don't know, it's a, at a very high level. Most NFTs are part of the Ethereum blockchain. But of course, there's you know private, private blockchains and hybrid things out there that you know a lot of stuff is constantly being built and innovated. Um, the, the validation with a certificate of authority. You know, it is unique and it can't be replaced by something else. That's just not something that we really had until now, this new age world, you know? Yeah, for me, uh, also I see a, a factor in the automation of the future. Future where IoTs are around us. My car, my freezer, yeah. my home, everything today we live in has been tokenized. Like uh, my credit card has been tokenized. So it's not something new. I remember uh, back in 2004 when we started, we were sending a content, which is a link, as a media. And this was having a security with it. In a way, the device receiver was not able to transfer or to transmit it. So it's a Nokia phone. So the media we are seeing today as uh, the foundation of how NFTs have been used by different people, like actors, artist it's now creating a new dimension so where we need to step back again and ask ourselves what is really nft but yeah that's what i mean we're at the new age right now love that so when i say new it's like we're just really at the beginning for our nfts right now it's a huge bubble right um, so what i believe which is going to happen is that there is a lot of um, investors out there creators um, they're getting out right now in a new age where it's perfect time if you're a creator or a photographer or anything like that and um, you know you need to also have your own platform right if you want to build something from the uh, the get-go you know um, you're going to need to have um, your own base um, your own you know team that's backing you and so forth so if that's what you want to build it from the start you know um, and then how, how we are currently envisioning, like, uh, 
if someone is now going into a bolsa like uh, Open Sea, the transfer line, they are all providing facilities for you to right. just define the formation, which are very straightforward. Then you generate the link to all that, uh, and then you share it, and then you make money. And people are, are sending each other posts uh, and are receiving money. Mm -hmm. how, how do we see this uh, moving on job? How, how we can really feel what's really the end that everybody is now saying is becoming a scam? How will we resolve all of, all of this for the future use of the, the real energy? Well, this is a very big topic. <laughs> yeah, the, the idea behind this is we have been experiencing ourselves as an organization. Yeah. And uh, back in 2018, we launched already our initial process with the very toughest area, which is the security side of the organization. So, so to the capital market today, we are talking about elements of using one of the very advanced uh, uh, known as security uh, asset. No asset. So the asset itself today can be anything. Mm. Asset can be this building, can be yourself, your knowledge, can be the rent that we generated by this building. And this has been materialized with a very ethical known as Sharia in the Islamic Convention. I mean, when you talk about Islamic Sharia, that it is the governing laws that define something we call ownership. So when we go back in the mainstream media, we are talking about NFT mm -hmm. as one single definition, which is ownership. And this ownership today is not really very well done. And that's what the reason you see actors you see many, so many people are coming and creating a file which has been there. YouTube has videos. You can create, you can create your YouTube video yeah, yeah. and share it with the people. So now, what, what is the new thing that the well, 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 yeah, well, it's the, ben the benefits of adopting crypto and assets and NFT is stopping uh, fraud by providing a certificate of authority or ownership of a specific asset. And you know what I kind of want to talk into is, is mostly, you know, everybody believes that it's just a digital asset, you know, that it's just something on the computer, like art or so forth. But it's so much more than just utilities. I wanted to share with you guys. I don't know if you heard this. This is relatively new in this space. Um, I don't know if a lot of people knew, but Nike, okay, Nike has patented a method to verify sneakers authority using an NFT system, which they call. Cyber kids. So they were the first ones to say, I'm going to tokenize part of my business that is not digital, but something for my business that is not digital. Exactly. This is very interesting because yes. now you are talking about a problem of copy, a copy, uh, problem of authenticity, mm -hmm. a problem of uh, uh, cyber, a problem of privacy. So now you touch a point of Nokia because Nokia today and there's so many other brands that are facing a lot of problems. Whatever they deliver as a brand, coming into the market, a lot of people are copying it. So how will they be able to trace it? So NFT become one of the solutions that will help them to trace it in a way that is going to be uniquely identified. So now we start from an ownership, and then we reach now a new term called the non-replicable. So it's defined as a no one of a kind or many of a kind. So now, if I say one of the kind, it means that the actual token itself being generated from something very unique. Right. So the use of it is linked with the owner. So the ownership and unicity. How how you see today like uh, the different actors and artists creating an NFT and coming into a marketplace and selling. How do you validate that this NFT is right? And this person exists? Well, there's only one original and unique, you know, I, whatever, whatever digital asset or, or non-digital asset there is, it's supposed to be only one, but obviously we're going to have bad actors, like you were just saying, that are going to say, hey, oh, I like this little image, let me take a screenshot of it. We're going to start seeing that as the time goes by. But, all these scammers and fake artists that are, that are doing this is going to slowly go away because we're going to have this platform that's really going to identify who really is who. There's going to be a, a, a time 
um, you know, well, it's already happened. <laughs> the, 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 there, there's going to be a time where we can, um, you know, see what kind of stuff you did. If you were like interested on um, you know, a certain art or something, if you were an art collector, or you know, we can start NFTing famous paintings or, or, or so forth. We can now look by not Googling your name, we can start looking at Googling, you know, your wallet and see everything you've really been up into or what kind of stuff that you know. Yeah. 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 It's just it's it's so much to go into. Where is the painting? If I buy it now, online, where where is it? In the room. Where is it? Okay, this is the question number one. Okay. okay. Question number two, how I know that you are an artist? Because what I see today in MetaMask as an example, I can go oh, ahead. I oh, use my email. You're talking about having to collaborate with each other. Go ahead. Go ahead. I use my email. Yeah. I use my mobile. I create my WhatsApp. Yeah. Now, then yeah. I say I can generate yeah. my email. Some, somebody bought it. Mm -hmm. But they don't know who is behind. If this is really the real person, this is a really Elon Musk, or this is the really Bill <laughs> Gates who really called this. There is no way for, for us to make all of this play to know. But what about the media side? Who is now knowing that this video is uniquely for me? Is unique for me. Signature is unique for me. The smile is unique for me. The selfie is unique for me. Who knows that? How, how we can really tackle all of those different problems that they are now in the mainstream media in a more realistic way so we can touch the real problem for sustainable future? Well, you, you know when we have the certificate authority and um, it, all in the smart contracts, we're going to have everything uh, written in there, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I think I know you're, you're, you're going to get yeah, that. Actually, uh, the uh, topic that we were having before, right? Uh, that's I was right. talking about decentralization. Yeah. So we are now touching a very important point is the identity. Identity is very important when it comes to anything. Because you cannot trust that an NFT that you generate is the owner of it is really very important. There should be another third party who will have a procedure we call them the KYC and KYB. Yeah. So they will perform all those checks. They will make sure this person exists. So there should be another second layer, which is the layer of the ownership. Someone else should really say that you own this. So I'm just going to take an example of what you say about the video. I take an example of Adobe after effort. I created my video. I published it. Are we today seeing Adobe endorse that these videos will be doing? No. Are we saying that today someone is going to say that you own this signature as you make? No. Are we saying someone today is saying that this data belongs to me? No. So the same way we have seen e-commerce, the same way we have seen the real life, we need to define the three boundaries. There are a lot of things we live as assets, which we call them in the real world. We call them the physical the real world asset. And then there are the digital assets. So whenever I created something, as an NFT, and this has a relation with something physically exists, someone has to say it's existing somewhere. But if I come and create the digital elements of the asset itself, I link it with the NFT, then the platform that has that information should be part of the network to authenticate that this NFT really exists. The second level is we should know as normal users, because now we are talking about people. We should know, I'm going to be the sole owner, if I buy it. Or I'm going to have maybe 1,000 people like me. Right, right. So how is, how is it going to evolve from your perspective? Because from my perspective, I believe we don't need one single entity to play this role. Yeah, right. We want to, like what we were just talking about, we're collaborating with all the other, like OpenSea, all the other ones, right? Have them communicate with each other as well. Um, 
Okay, uh, there is one point you mentioned about the ICO side. Okay. What was the logic behind the movement that is moving from a crypto and now we are talking about asset? Because if you say crypto, yeah. we are not talking about crypto or digital asset. But when we say about NFT, we are really talking about non fungible token, which is a unique token, all of the time. Yeah. So the relation between both is now creating a new dimension, what we call it the invisible side that we see. Because in the very near future, all the IoT devices we are currently living in, you watch, go by, all the equipment we are living in, they will be completely known in all the network organization. Yeah, yeah. So how is, from your perspective, we are going to witness the transformation of the hidden transaction that will happen? Well, I think it's going to be just the same way that, you know, ICO was, like how it's kind of started. You know, we, we saw a big burst. Um, we're, we're basically we're talking about how it's trending, right? So everybody, you know, um, got into ICO. They ran into it. They they created like a you know white paper one to get in the business really quick. And that's what I was trying to say earlier that we we're kind of like in a bubble. We're in that area again. Um, I you know there's a lot of research out there, documentation that 90% of these people buying NFTs, just any NFT off these marketplaces, that you know they're overpaying it for it right now, and then um, you know. A uh, year, two years later, it's it's going to drop, and they're going to be you know losing money in their investment. But but depending on you know the, the platform, if you have like a good support, um, you know, but like Ethereum or like you know it's something that that something that create like new technology or you know something like depends on the brand, right? If you picked a good one, even though you know we're paying it for now, right? It can. You know, be 10, 20 fold in you know 15 years. It's exactly what like what happened to um, us on all the blockchains. I was an original investor of um, you know Bitcoin, even though it was like five dollars. I was a, a you know I was a miner of um, of um, you know Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and Dogecoin. So so what I'm saying is that it's trending. If you look at the trend line, it's like the exact same way, right? Really, in that kind of space. So, what you are saying is what we witnessed before was the ICO and the regulators came into play. They start regulating the ICO, and now we are witnessing a new, a new wave, which the asset side. So, NFTs have been creating a bubble. So, actors, uh, artists, they jump in. And now they are now also bouncing back. So we are living in a new way, which is the other side of asset. So we are going to witness another level of the policies and procedures that we witness this. As an example, I was just going to take a prayer from this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you want yeah. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say is, what do we mention about this in specific? There are platforms today that they are called the decentralized wallet platform. And now the future is now moving into a relation between crypto asset and entities. So now from your perspective, in your experience as a blogger, okay, how do you see the public responding to what is really happening? Because what you said is about the ICO, but now for the NFT is a new way. Well yeah, I mean people can start now using, you know, or if rather you go to download stock images and so forth, you can actually prove it's authentic and you're, when you have an NFT, you have pretty much the copyright. We're actually authenticating that it, this really is real and not something fake, you know? So in, in the media space, you're gonna, we're gonna start seeing more things be real, you know, and actually real and, and we can say like what's pirated or not. So, um, what I wanted to get into, I just wanted to get your all your thoughts. <laughs> so, uh, what, what are, you know, we there's a lot of um, things happening in the market right now where um, you know big time ball players um, like let's talk about like Tom Brady and, and um, Ron Gronkowski, for instance. Um, they are creating they're NFTing moments of their professional football career, like when Ron Gronkowski scored like. A touchdown in the Super Bowl. 
he's made millions and millions of dollars. And that's what I'm trying to talk about. As long as you have a platform or something like that, don't just buy any Joe Smo NTF. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because that's the 97% of what I'm talking about. It's going to fail. Okay? Um, you know, so at Tom Brady, he created a company called Autograph.io, and he has all professional um, sport players like Tony Hawks himself, um, ABC, right? He's bringing on board, um, and they're basically creating it. So we're going to make baseball cards, football cards, things of the past. This is going to be the new way of trading. You know, people like, you know, Magic the Gathering or Pokemon cards, that's a hit now too. That's happening, that's real life. I was, I mean, you mentioned uh, something also very interesting we are only uh, on the other side. So now imagine I am an owner of an animal and uh, I want everybody, after I pass away, my children to earn. We have seen this with Michael Jackson. So he's making money. More than when he was alive. Oh yeah. So now, how is NFT will be able to overcome such kind of problems? The same way we are now talking about copyright, talking about trademark, algo no vanish. So companies who are currently working to protect trademarks, uh, working on all of this, are going to disappear. And now we are not talking about the personalized education. Okay, personalized healthcare. Yeah. Everything will be personalized. How you see this also in this? Side of royalty. I like that question. Okay, so, you know, in the past, um, you know, still present, you know, we're doing a lot of things by, you know, paper contracts. There's going to come, you know, a time when we're always moving digital. We always want faster, next, you know, how can we really just see this, you know, like I was trying to say in one of my other talks on the other, uh, you know, in the Internet 2.0 is blockchain. Like you can think about any data structure, for instance, that um, in blockchain, it, it is one where it's it, a block of transactions linked to the chain with another block of transactions is really just a database. And now we're gonna have all these tools um, where we're gonna be able to go right in there and see what this person did and this, and it's all gonna be you know, linked. So, uh, <laughs> okay, like, well, let's go back to that, go ahead. Uh, what I also see in the same space, I see a similar case for one of the platforms that we are having in the company called OG Chain. What we have done, we created a multi layer where we have institutions that everyone is playing a specific role. So an institution will make a validation of the identity, we call it the KYC and KYB, we do the background check. So if you are a, an issuer, an owner of an NFT, Today, yeah. in yeah. the one, someone should say yes, you own it. Right. So, the second level, uh, when you are an investor, you want to really buy that NFT, you will come into the platform, we do some kind of background check as well. So, we do the KYC for you as, as a consumer, or as an organization, we do the KYC. And we manage also something called the likeness, because you may be a robot, you may be a lot people. So what we do, we make lifeness check on you. You are really human, digitally. Whenever we fit with that all of this, we don't take the decision on the platform itself. Right. The decision is taken by someone who is uh, authorized as a compliance officer. So this, the guy who will say, yes, this person is really very clean and white listed. So now you see, we authenticate the side of the, I, uh, the identity. Right, right. We don't have to care to the NFT, so the transaction is automatic. Isn't, isn't there countries that are already doing what you're just saying? I right, mean, right. It's, 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 it's started in 2018, and we got a firma only in the uh, no action letter, and uh, in Switzerland. So, what we are currently saying is something that is already on beta. So, this platform will be resolved by a lot of what we are now talking about NFT because it's going to solve the problem of identity, solve the problem of authenticity, and solve the problem of automation of the transaction between you. Because if you buy the NFT, we need to make the ownership management itself. How we update the records. So, all of this now are happening on the bubble. But this bubble is going to vanish the same way we see the ICO right. has vanished. Right, right. Um, yeah, that's exactly, you know, that's what I predict. So, 
So here, the, the second part, which we, uh, we would like to uh, also convey to uh, the audience, is more about the future. How this NFT can really replace a lot of conventional activities we are doing today. Uh, what we believe, we believe that the relation between NFT and crypto, talking about crypto asset and uh, NFT, is uh, a, a second or a third way. There will be another way where I don't really need a Bitcoin or an Ether or a CBDC to transact with someone who has an NFT. So we are going back to the world where we are using the bottle. So I have an NFT of mango, and uh, you have an NFT of orange. I don't need it to rely on uh, uh, Bitcoin or Ether. I can exchange with you, you give me. So we do swapping between these uh, NFTs. So we are going to live in a life where all our needs are only really tokenized, and we make the transaction into one to one between the NFT itself. So this crypto asset or digital asset are only also another transition. When when do you like when do you think that's gonna happen in like, you know, like video games where people are gonna stop just trading that way? It's like, oh, I bought this, you know, this template or or this like, you know, gun for instance on Call of Duty or something, right? And you know, they have this template, the way it looks or so on. And now you can pretty much talk on PlayStation or Xbox, be like, hey, I'll trade you, and do it on the watching. Like, you really, do you think that's going to happen? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is what we love, you know, I, yeah. because uh, I heard in the, the other set, in the other room, someone was talking about blockchain mm -hmm. for something called Sukuk, which is uh, similar to the normal asset in security side, in the capital market. But there is something very key here. How we will be able to make swapping? Meaning, I can use the edit itself to pay. So how is it going to happen? We do something called splitting process. So it's mean if I have an NFT with the one million US dollar value, mm -hmm. and I am targeting customers who are really more into a ticket size of one hundred, I can take this NFT because it's a non fungible then I will uh, cut it into 10, 20, 30 parts. Then I take a partial part of it, and then I list it, or I use it to shop. So this is also another level of making it the NFT itself useful in payments. It's not only just for the selling or buying. No, it can also be used for payments because the splitting mechanism is there. So all the level, the sub-level of the crypto value, that you are having today, it's going to also happen on the energy. And this is yeah. been done on the platform I'm talking about that we have done. So this platform is going to be released and it's going to be available within uh, our uh, uh, marketplace, which is what is done. And it's also going to be operating from Switzerland because we already have the action later. And the reason I'm mentioning about all of these points is because we are talking about the safetyness of NFTs. In order for us to build the sentence, we needed to involve the institutions that they are today regulated. Our colleague on the decentralization mentioned that in India, as an example, you cannot talk about centralization. You can talk about decentralization, but in a more localized way, because all actors are having the power of voting. And this is exactly what's really going to happen, and this is what is really being done within our, our platform to resolve the issue of security and safety of NFTs.